Later that night, Lucina sat obediently as three maids dressed her up. Titi, stroking Lucina's silver locks, complimented her beauty and told her she would surely capture the king's heart. But the other two maids teased Lucina, saying she was too skinny and doubting she would survive the night with the king. The two kept snickering and one of them asked if Lucina knew why the king avoided women. Before Lucina could answer, the other maid explained it was because the king feared any woman who slept with him would die. Still confused, Lucina listened as one maid speculated that perhaps women who had slept with the king didn't know how great a draconian was. Hearing the mocking, Titi grew angry. She grabbed Lucina's arm reassuringly and told her not to worry, that she would be fine and surely bear the king a beautiful baby before becoming queen. With that, Titi pushed Lucina to meet the king. Remembering the maid's earlier words, Lucina worried that Hakan might beat her in the bedroom. When seeing Lucina's beauty, Hakan was stunned. Blushing, he praised her beauty. Setting down his wine glass, Haken beckoned Lucina over. Haken caressed her silver locks, marveling that such lovely hair had once been sullied by cheap dye. Thrilled by his admiration, Lucina's heart fluttered since no one had ever praised her looks. Suddenly, Hakan leaned in and whispered, if she would faint again if he kissed her now. Lucina's cheeks flushed, and she shook her head vigorously. Charmed by her reaction, Hakan slowly drew nearer and kissed her. Feeling Hakan's soft, warm lips, Lucina's pulse quickened. As Hakan shed his robe, revealing his bare skin, Lucina felt shy. Thinking she was staring at the tattoo on his shoulder, Hakan explained it was the symbol of his birth tribe and was etched into his skin. Drawing Lucina close, he told her not to be afraid and guided her hand to his muscular chest. Lucina was surprised at how firm and hard his muscle felt, like a rock. She wondered if all men's bodies were so muscular. Gently, Hakan asked if Lucina wanted to leave or stay the night with him. Before she could reply, he suddenly lifted her up and laid her on the bed. Startled by his abrupt action, Lucina looked up at the powerful man looming over her, her heart racing faster. Then the maid's earlier words echoed in her mind, and she feared this strong man would surely beat her to death if he wished. Trembling at the thought, Lucina couldn't help but shudder in fear. Seeing the girl quaka beneath him, Hakan sighed and sat up. Lucina wondered if Hakan was angry. Hakan told her he wasn't. He asked if she wanted to return to Velk and her family. Lucina denied it, saying she was his wife now and would not leave. Remembering Titi's reassurance, she repeated the same to Hakan. Hearing her earnest reply, Hakan asked if she knew what becoming queen really meant. Lucina felt puzzled. Hakan explained it required the resolve to die for him and all of Tyre tried. He asked if she could do that. Lucina fell silent, hesitating. Seeing her uncertainty, Hakan donned his robe again and said he would not hold her until she found that resolve. Turning from Lucina, he bade her rest and said he would sleep elsewhere tonight. After Hakan left, Lucina remained alone and confused in the bedroom. When word spread of how the king had left his young wife untouched for days, the maids mocked Lucina. Furious, Titi wanted to scold them while Lucina told her friend to let it go. Just then, Lucina overheard whispers that Hakan might marry Giare instead. Frozen in shock, she heard someone say it was common practice for Tyre Tried's king to engage in levirate marriage. Lucina knew levirate marriage meant Hakan could marry Giaret, the widow of his late brother. Even more distressing, she learned Hakan had unrequited love for Giaret. Lucina hadn't seen Hakan since that night. Titi once comforted her, saying Hakan had probably left the palace temporarily, but would surely return for her. But the maid's hurtful words lingered in Lucina's mind. She wondered if Hakan fell for a beautiful woman like Giaret. She cringed, recalling how submissive she'd been with Hakan, looking utterly pathetic. Just then, Titi burst in excitedly to tell Lucina that Hakan had returned and wanted to see her. Hearing he was back, Lucina's eyes lit up and she summoned her courage to go to him. Suddenly, Jurette's voice called out, stopping her. With a mocking tone, Jurette said she almost didn't recognize her with her current hair color. Flustered, Lucina greeted Jurette but stammered nervously. Seeing this, Giarette assumed a haughty posture, saying she couldn't understand Lucina's words. 
she taunted that it was precisely Lucina's pitiful state that had angered Hakan into leaving the bedroom that night. Hearing Giaret's words, Lucina felt ashamed. Suddenly, Giaret grabbed her arm, examined Lucina, and remarked that she was too thin. Giaret suggested that even if Lucina managed to be with Hakan, she wouldn't endure it and might even die. Giaret released Lucina's arm and wiped her hand in disgust, as if she had touched something dirty. She warned Lucina to leave quickly, saying she clearly lacked the resolve to be Hakan's wife. Confused, Lucina asked why she would be in danger. Giaret was astonished at her ignorance, chuckling that Lucina should have died that first night with Hakan. She said it seemed that Hakan didn't inform Lucina of everything. Lucina became even more curious upon hearing this and wondered if Hakan had been keeping something from her. Giaret explained that the Tyar kingdom was not a safe place for women and likened it to a burial ground. Only a rare few could survive absorbing a dragon's energy. Giaret advised Lucina once again to give up. But before she could finish, Hakan interrupted her. Giaret immediately greeted Hakan respectfully, and Lucina followed suit. Hakan asked if Giaret had been talking to Lucina, and Giaret replied that she was merely been giving Lucina a friendly warning. Hakan was puzzled. Giaret claimed that she, too, wanted to kindly remind Hakan that not all women were capable of being a draconian's wife. Someone as frail as Lucina would likely perish as a dragon's bride. She hoped Hakan would think twice and make the right choice for the entire Tyre tribe. Hakan's expression darkened. He thanked Giaret for her concern, but firmly reiterated that his choice of wife was his alone to decide. Taking Lucina's arm, he walked away. Hakan explained to Lucina that he'd been very busy, which was why he hadn't seen her. He asked if she had gotten used to life here. Lucina silently nodded. Seeing her silence, Hakan asked directly if she had any questions for him. Lucina had many questions in her heart but didn't know where to start. With trembling words, she asked Hakan why she would die if she became a queen. Seeing the nervous Lucina, Hakan worried that his previous words that night had frightened her. He explained again that being a draconian's wife required accepting the ever-present danger. Since Lucina had not come to this country voluntarily, it was natural she lacked that resolve. Hakan self-deprecatingly himself for being no better than the perverted Brionian king. Hearing this, Lucina instinctively clutched Hakan's arm, insisting it wasn't true. Overcome with emotion, she confessed her real feelings. Hakan was the first person willing to hear her out without anger. To confirm once more, Hakan asked if she was telling the truth, and Lucina eagerly nodded, tears in her eyes. Hakan was puzzled and asked if she wasn't Baron Velk's only daughter. He wondered why her family wouldn't let her speak freely. Lucina realized that she had misspoken. She couldn't let Hakon discover that she was actually an illegitimate child. Lucina made up a reason, saying that she couldn't talk properly. Hakon didn't fully believe her and even suspected that her family despised her, perhaps even giving her away to the old king as a concubine. Flustered, Lucina suddenly felt Hakon stroking her hair. He said he couldn't fathom why her family would treat such a lovely daughter so poorly. Hakon said, if he had such a beautiful daughter, he would cherish her immensely. With that, Hakon gently smelled Lucina's hair, causing her to blush. When she heard Hakon call her adorable, Lucina's heart raced once again. Their intimate moment was interrupted by an urgent report from a guard. Upon hearing that Adar was missing, Hakon was astonished. The guard speculated that Adar might have slipped away during Hakan's visit to Korsik. Hakan stated that he would immediately search for her because once she heard his voice, she would come back. Hakan told Lucina that he had to leave for now. After Hakan went, his words of praise echoed in Lucina's mind as her pulse quickened again. Lucina realized that compared to Hakan's affection, she suddenly cared far less about possible death. Gazing at herself in the mirror, Lucina was elated. After all, this was the first time she had been praised as adorable. But soon Lucina calmed down and recalled Jarrett's words. Lucina turned to Titi, who was tidying up her clothes, and asked what it meant to absorb Dragon's energy. Hesitating for a moment, Titi wasn't sure whether she should explain these things to Lucina since Hakan hadn't told her. 
Titi finally said it meant bearing a draconian child. Lucina then asked if women died in childbirth often. Titi honestly replied that giving birth to a strong draconian child was not easy. Therefore, a Hoover could be heir. Haken's child could become the queen. Lucina thought understood the reason sleeping with Haken held such peril was probably she was too frail. Titi told Lucina about Jarrett's past. Jarrett came from humble family and had been a maid, but after giving birth to a child for the previous king, she quickly became a queen of high status. Hearing about Jarrett's background, Lucina couldn't help but think of her own origins. She realized that her birth was not as important as she once thought. Titi encouraged Lucina, certain she could birth Hakan a lovely baby and become queen. The more Titi spoke, the more motivated she became. Titi picked out revealing clothes for Lucina, hoping to attract Hakan's attention. While the vibe in Lucina's place was pleasant and peaceful, Hakan was consumed with worry over Adar. Hakan looked at Adar, who was resting peacefully on the bed. He was deeply concerned. He believed that his abrupt departure earlier had frightened Adar, thinking that he had gone off to battle again. Adar must have been worried sick. Adar was Hakan's biological mother and, in her youth, had been an excellent and beautiful queen who gave birth to two children, continuing the dragon bloodline. She was said to be blessed by the fire. Such an outstanding queen, however, had gone mad after losing one of her sons, Riken. She didn't believe that Riken was dead and refused to bury him. So, even after ten years had passed, Haken still hadn't buried his brother's body in Mezaluk. During these ten years, Adar had carefully preserved Riken's body in the sacred cave in Korsik. She was terrified that Riken would disappear, so Adar had stayed there for the past decade. Adar always believed that one day her Raycon would wake up. Hakan woke from his sorrowful memories and left the room. The guard was puzzled as to why Hakan hadn't gone to Lucina's palace. Hakan explained he wasn't in the mood. However, the guard was infuriated, believing that Hakan should go to her for the sake of tribe's descendants. If Lucina couldn't do it, then he should go to Jiret. The guard mentioned Raycon and the late king, both of whom had died. If Hakan were to meet a similar fate, the entire bloodline of the Guardian Dragon would be lost. Hakan remained unmoved and expressed that it was precisely why he had married Lucina. The Gord insisted that Hakan should follow the late king's example and got to know different women. Hearing the Guard's words, Hakan was angry. Scolding in anger, Hakan told the Guard that he wouldn't see women die right in front of him. Before Raken met Jiaret, who later bore Raken's child, many others had failed and perished first. Bearing a draconian's child was tremendously risky, and few women could withstand its fiery energy and live. That was why Hakan avoided women. But the guard insisted that despite the danger, countless women lusted for the power of becoming queen by birthing a draconian's child, willing to gamble their lives. He also stated that Riken had told him that many women were sold to this place by their fathers against their will. Riken had told him that Jiaret was the only woman who wasn't afraid of him, and that's why Riken liked her. The guard countered by asking Haken why he didn't choose Jiaret then, especially since she had feelings for him. Women who had already born a dragon child had a high chance of succeeding again. Haken should engage in leverate marriage. Haken faltered. Memories of what Raikan had said to him resurfaced. Raikan had told Hekhan that he had known from the moment he saw Giaret that they were destined for each other. Regardless of life or death, he wanted her by his side. Raikan also told Hekhan that Giaret loved Raikan, not his status. Raikan had hoped Hekhan could also find such a woman. The words of Raikan reinforced Hekhan's resolve, and he said that Giaret wasn't that woman for him. Seeing Hakan's determination, the guard was frustrated and stated that if Hakan didn't want anyone, then he should hurry up and go to Lucina. Hakan sighed. He looked at the starry night sky, feeling a mix of emotions. He felt sorry for women who had to risk their lives just for bearing a draconian's child. The guard calmly explained that without draconians, the Tyre kingdom would have long been conquered by neighboring countries all the Werebeast tribes would have been dragged away as slaves. To the Brianian people, Tyars were nothing more than beasts. 
and all the people within were considered barbarians. However, due to the fear of the Draconians and the formidable fire energy they possessed, the Brionians dared not advance further. Hakan remained silent. The guard spoke more gently and advised Hakan should let Lucina bear his child as soon as possible for the sake of Tyar. It was his duty as the current king. Hakan hesitated, fearing that Lucina might die as a result. The guard, however, dismissed his concerns, stating that Hakan's hasty marriage to Lucina had likely considered that possibility. The guard was puzzled by Hakan's excessive concern for Lucina. Listening to the guard's words, Hakan felt ashamed and ran his hand through his hair, unable to explain the reason for his concern. He believed that it might be because Lucina reminded him of the young girl who had saved him in the past. The guard remained unyielding, believing that even if Lucina had become the concubine of that Brionian king, her chances of survival were slim. Risking her life to bear Hakan's child would be a better choice for her. Hakan argued that Lucina might not agree to that. The guard was infuriated, insisting that Hakan should personally ask Lucina for her choice and let her decide her own fate. Alone in her chambers, Lucina was shocked when Titi told Hakan was coming to her. She was preparing to greet him. The door suddenly swung open and Hakan stumbled in, clearly drunk with a wine bottle in hand. As Hakan walked into the room, Titi immediately bowed to him, while Lucina felt nervous. Hakan, in a drunken state, gestured for Titi to leave, and she hurriedly rushed out. Hakan walked up to Lucina and they looked at each other. Before Lucina could ask if Hakan was done with work, she saw him reach out to her. Stroking Lucina's hair, Hakan complimented her on becoming more and more stunning. Hakan asked Lucina if she would feel upset that he couldn't come by often. Blushing, Lucina shook her head. Hakan raised Lucina's face and assured her that he would come more often from now on, and then he kissed her directly. In that moment, Lucina felt for the first time how wonderful kissing could be. Gazing at Lucina, Hakan said he wanted to go further and asked if she would still be afraid. Without answering, Lucina kissed him back instead. The two kissed passionately. As their emotions deepened, Hakan lifted Lucina and placed her on the bed. Looking down at Lucina, Hakan asked again the question he had asked before, whether she had made up her mind. Lucina confessed she wasn't sure and suddenly asked Hakan if he really thought she was pretty. Hakan emphatically stated that Lucina's beauty was undeniable to everyone. Hakan's words touched Lucina. She said this was the first time in her life someone had complimented her like that. Hakan gently stroked Lucina and mocked that Brionians must be blind not to see Lucina's charm. Hearing this, Lucina was very happy. Suddenly, Lucina's smile froze. She recalled the earlier rumor about Hakan having once secretly loved Giaret. Thinking Hakan might have been intimate with Giaret like this, Lucina pushed him away. Lucina asked what Hakan thought of Giaret. Hakan looked puzzled. Lucina explained that Giaret was also very pretty and asked him if he liked Giaret. Hakan just laughed and told Lucina that she was the one with him now. Nervous, Lucina told Hakan she had heard others say he would marry Giaret. Angrily, Hakan told Lucina not to believe rumors. With head lowered, Lucina anxiously recounted she had heard Hakan had a crush on Giaret when he was younger. Hakan frowned. He told Lucina to stop discussing Giaret or he would leave immediately. Without a direct denial from Hakan, Lucina's doubts deepened. Uneasily, Lucina said Hakan must have just been lying about, thinking she was pretty. Hakan looked at Lucina with irritation. Lucina continued to wrestle with her thoughts and said Hakan preferred Giaret more. Hearing this, Hakan angrily questioned what Lucina was saying and why she kept talking about Giaret. Seeing Hakan's anger, Lucina became fearful and looked at him anxiously. Seeing the timid girl before him, Hakan calmed down. He told Lucina that if she did not want to be his wife, she should just tell him instead of angering him. With that, Hakan turned and left. As she watched Hakan leave her once again, Lucina felt deeply saddened. The next day, Giaret listened as her maids reported that Hakan had left Lucina alone in the room again. The maids casually slandered Lucina and speculated she was afraid of Hakan. With a smug expression, 
Giaret thought Hakan would lose interest in Lucina, since he disliked women who were fearful. Giaret chuckled, thinking that even the Lucina personally chosen by Hakan wasn't all that special. The maids flattered Giaret, saying that Hakan would eventually realize that Giaret was the most suitable to be his wife, the future queen. Hearing the flattery, Giaret was very pleased. She said she still remembered Hakan secretly gazing at her when he was young. Back then, because his brother was still around, Hakan had kept his love hidden. But now he would definitely come back to her side. Giaret was sure the one to become the future queen would certainly be her. After that night, Hakan never visited Lucina again, leaving her depressed. Titi comforted her, saying Hakan must be very busy. Lucina blamed herself for her illogical words and felt that she couldn't continue like this. With tears in her eyes, Lucina asked Titi for help. Titi encouraged Lucina to practice with her, believing that practice makes perfect. Titi also mentioned that when she first learned the tire language, she practiced by talking to herself. With Titi's encouragement, Lucina started practicing with her. Lucina began with stumbling and stuttering, but gradually progressed to speaking complete sentences fluently. During their conversation, Lucina learned that Titi came from a country called Luandi. In order to afford the tuition for her younger siblings, she came to the Tyar kingdom to work as a maid. Lucina also talked about her own family situation. Titi advised Lucina to speak slowly and express her thoughts clearly. So, Lucina spoke slowly and said that she also had a sibling, but they did not get along very well. Just as Lucina was about to explain further, there was a knock at the door. A maid told Lucina that Giare wanted to see her. Hearing this, Lucina became afraid and worried. When Lucina and Titi arrived at Giare's palace, they respectfully bowed to her. Titi whispered to Lucina beside her, encouraging her to express her thoughts completely. Lucina nodded anxiously. Lucina plucked up the courage to ask Giare why she had summoned her. Giaret, with an air of arrogance, told Lucina they were going to discuss the upcoming royal banquet. She thought Lucina probably did not have a suitable evening dress yet, so she had prepared a dress for Lucina. Lucina looked at the dress. The black color made her feel confused, because this color represented mourning in Biron. Lucina wondered if black had a different meaning in Tayar. Seeing the black dress, Titi became uneasy and told Giaret that the black dress looked like a funeral dress. But Giaret scoffed and told them that she had made this dress because she felt sorry for Lucina, since she refused to sleep with Hakan, and she must have missed her relatives in Biron. Giaret claimed that if Lucina wore this dress in front of Hakan, it would let Hakan know Lucina's true feelings, and she would be sent home. Hearing Giaret's words, Lucina and Titi both became uneasy. Giaret laughed and told Lucina not to refuse her kindness. Titi felt indignant for Lucina, who remained silent, looking at Titi. When Lucina got back, she changed into a black dress. Titi was upset and thought everyone else would be wearing fancy dresses at the party, while Lucina wearing black would go unnoticed. Titi worried about Hakan's reaction if he thought Lucina in black resented him for the deaths caused by him in her country. Lucina was also worried. If Hakan really misunderstood her because of this black dress, he would never visit her again. She also feared he might send her back home. Just then, there was a sudden sound outside the door. The saw an unfamiliar woman with gray hair holding a dragon doll in her hand. Lucina asked Titi who she was, and Titi said she did not recognize her either. The woman looked at Lucina and asked why she was wearing the black dress assuming one of her acquaintances had passed away. The woman expressed sympathy to Lucina and rushed over, wanting to hug Lucina. Then Lucina explained that to her. The woman told Lucina that she could not wear a black dress to the banquet. Looking at the woman's makeup, Titi judged that she was definitely not a maid. The woman suggested that she could alter the dress for Lucina, while Titi plucked up the courage to ask the woman's identity. The woman whose actual name was Adar introduced herself as Lita and told Lucina that as long as she gave her some food, she could help Lucina modify the dress for the banquet. Titi felt that the woman's name sounded very familiar. She later remembered that this was the name of the former queen's headmaid. Seeing the hungry Lita in front of her, 
Lucina told Titi to get some food for Lita first. Giaret learned that Adar had disappeared and speculated that she might have gone to the Queen's Palace, where Lucina was staying for now. She decided to go and escort Adar back, telling the maids not to tell Hakan about this for now. Seeing the Sumptuous feast in front of her, Lita wolfed it down. After enjoying a hearty meal, Lita prepared to modify Lucina's black dress. Seeing the dress being cut open with scissors, the two became very afraid. Lita casually asked Lucina if there was someone she liked, saying she could make sure that man would fall in love with Lucina when he saw her wearing the altered dress. She assured Lucina that with a few alterations, she could make her stand out in the black dress at the banquet. Titi, still concerned about the dress being cut, expressed her worries, but Lita reassured her to trust her. Giaret stood outside Lucina's room and saw all this happening. The maid asked Giaret what they should do. Giaret turned and left, saying to just let Adar make a scene like this. After all, it had been a long time since she had seen her so happy. She thought Lucina should feel honored. Wearing the altered dress, Lucina was just clutching her robe, extremely shy. She said she would never wear this dress to the banquet. But Titi wanted to pull away Lucina's robe, telling her she had no choice. Lita, who was watching beside, said she was hungry again and asking for more food. Titi finally pulled away Lucina's robe, showing this altered dress in front of them made her even more shy. Lucina felt the dress was too revealing. Subscribe because we will be back with another video.